Trans-Pecos region of West Texas. It has been a little while since I've been out here. And, not gonna lie, started off trying to find snakes, but it seemed like I was seeing everything but that. We were greeted by this beautiful Axis deer, walking around strutting his stuff. Some cute little dung beetles just rolling some poo-poo across the, the road, and I'm not embarrassed to say that I kind of laid down on the ground and filmed them and stared at them doing their job for quite some time. I actually think they're kind of cute, so enjoy watching these dudes roll. Got to see a cute little baby hog. And then, oh my gosh, these jackrabbits are everywhere. And honestly, something's wrong with their head because they seem like they just want to dive bomb your vehicle every time you drive by them. They're crazy. And the cute little mama axis deer with their baby fawn. We saw quite a few axis deer, just quite a few. It was a big mammal watch in the beginning. And we continued going, and I'm not gonna lie. It was seeming kind of slow, and it was odd, just because you get out here, sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow, but luckily, shortly after this, we finally actually struck gold. Oh, guys, hold on. Let me see if I can get him without him running. Woo! Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him. Guys, check out this little guy right here. I can't believe I actually spotted this guy from the truck, but I tell you the only reason I spotted this joker is because he started running and moving. If these guys don't run, there's no seeing them just because their camouflage is that daggum immaculate. This is a round tail horn lizard. And they're actually one of the more common lizards around this area for regarding the horn lizards. And they're not very big. As you can see, this guy's actually a baby, so don't think they're all this size. They max out around the three to four inch mark. And so this dude's hopefully got a long life ahead of him. And I can probably much tell you that he's going to do just fine as long as he sits still and relies on that camouflage because if you look at his ground color he is just perfectly matched to this limestone rock around here i mean this little white and gray coloring blends in just perfectly with this ground color and like most horn lizards this guy is a specialist feeder he loves ants but he can't actually branch out a little bit he can't eat other insects as well and these guys are just absolutely gorgeous almost every time i see them i freak out because these guys make me feel like a kid they remind me of a daggum dinosaur it's like a little triceratops or protoceratops whatever type of ceratops you want to imagine this little crown ridge on the back of his head just so daggum adorable you want to give him a kiss but i'm not going to kiss him because i think that would scare him too much but absolutely cute little dude and you can see why they call him a round tail i'll zoom in on him a little bit later but right there at the base right behind his hind legs it actually rounds out before it actually enters his tail so he's got a little base that is fatter than the rest of his tail gorgeous little lizard and we'll let him go on his way. I gotta praise Jesus for this guy because I'm just so daggum happy to find these dudes. I love you, buddy. I hope you have a wonderful life. There you go. You have to appreciate how fast these little boogers are. Just watch them. That dude can book it. Well, tonight, fellas, it's our first night over here in the Trans-Pecos region. Of Alberta County and currently we have spotted one round tail horn lizard a Texas horn lizard and some poo-poo beetles and that's about it thus far but the night is still young and my faith is high so my prediction is massive alternative migration massive and so I've got to keep my eyes on the road so that way I can make sure I can spot these boat boogers. We continued driving all throughout the rest of the night and not gonna lie, luck just wasn't on our side that first night because we didn't see a whole lot of nothing. But luckily, if you looked in the distance, there was rain clouds galore and that's really what we needed was we needed the temperature to drop some and so you can see the nice lightning that we got and beautiful thunderstorms up there. And luckily, it helped us out. Guys, that's the great thing about hitting up Trans-Pecos area during a rainstorm is these little cute toads will actually start to chill out inside of these pools of water that we see on the ground. And Lord knows, if you know anything about me, I am a sucker for toads. And right now we've got two gorgeous ones. We got this Texas toad right here. And then we got one of my personal favorites, the Couch's Spadefoot. And if you know me outside of snake hunt, you know that I'm an avid hunter. And I love the, the camouflage color. And this old couchy right here has exactly that. He's got a nice little camo pattern going all over his back. 
and then he's got these sweet looking elliptical slit pupils that really help him to just do well in nighttime hunting and like most toads these guys do secrete a poisonous toxin from their skin but it's completely harmless to humans unless we go around eating them which of course we don't do whenever we see them like if for anything you just want to give them a big kiss but of course don't actually kiss them because that, that would be bad but these dudes are absolutely adorable i gotta praise the good lord for them i love seeing cute oh listen do it do it for him come on he was he was just a whining for you i wanted you to hear him whine they got a cute little sound do it for him Nah, he's not going to do it for you. I got to praise, Je praise Jesus for these guys. These dudes are just absolutely adorable. Every time I see them, I... F he's going to talk to you. Talk for him. Oh my gosh, they're talking. They're saying, let me go, man. Remember, these dudes think that I want to eat them. And that kind of makes me a little bit sad. I love hearing them talk. But then again, it's kind of a sad cry. So I'm going to put them right back. Oh, I love you too. I'm gonna put them right back in their puddle and let them go, okay? Praise your Lord for these guys. Shortly after filming the toads, we actually stumbled across this beautiful brown tarantula. And uh, this is how chase stories actually form. As you can see, my mama's gonna reach down there and touch his foot, and he starts coming towards her. <laughs> now, people who are scared of spiders would have sworn up and down that that guy was chasing her. When in actuality, he was just running in fear of his life. And they don't really pick a direction, they just go. And in his case, it was the direction that was back towards where he originally came from. Oh my goodness. This right here, guys, is the Vinegaroon. Now the Vinegaroon is actually arachnid and he gets his name from the ability to shoot acetic acid which basically gives it that vinegar-like smell. These guys are completely harmless. They don't have any venom or poison, but that acetic acid can get inside of your eyes and give you a little bit of a burning sensation. You can see they get their name, the whip scorpion, from that little whip-like tail that they got at the end, but it's actually not a tail. It's used for more, moreover like a, a sensory perceptor type thing. Where are you going, buddy? Oh my gosh, he's feeling at me. Is he walking on my hand? Ooh. Ooh. Come on, come on. Perfect. And so this dude right here has very, very powerful pinchers that he uses to subdue his prey. And then he's got these modified chelicerae teeth-like thing in the front that are used to just chew the prey apart. And these guys have a pretty strong bite. These pinchers in the front are very, very powerful. And then so is their bite as well. Woo, my eyes are getting kind of a... Uh, gassed he may be letting some of that vinegar up in the air right now because my eyes are starting to burn some but that's pretty much the worst these things can do they're actually pretty quick too if you would have seen him running around on the ground and me trying to catch him took me a while to get him because this guy can bolt whenever he wants to they're fairly commonly found over here on rock cuts or crossing the road just as you saw right there and these dudes are just boss predators. You can see they got three walking legs and then they got these two modified ones in the front that are just like long extensions of feelers. And he's just constantly probing around, looking around, trying his best to just feel and make sure that danger is not around. And he'll even use his pincher sometimes as a point of purchase to hang on and keep him from falling. And so as long as he doesn't do that to me to where I think like, oh gosh, he's gonna get me. Cause that's the thing, I love snakes. But woo wee, this stuff, total out of my comfort zone. It's like, oh, I've never messed with this stuff before. But he is super cool. Every time I see one of these vinegaroons, I always get super, super excited. Crazy arachnid that you do not commonly see. And just really cool, archaic looking arthropod. Praise you God for this guy. I'm going to let him go on his way. Absolutely gorgeous specimen. And man, what a cool, cool animal to find out here. It was really interesting after we uh, put him down on the ground after the documentary was over and I was trying to get some B-roll, he just kept on coming right back to me. So every time I'd lay down on the ground with the camera, that joker would come head in my direction. And so I was like, ah, this guy's my arachnid friend. So I picked him up, let him kind of walk around me for a little bit and just got a feel for him some more. And it was nice. I kind of got over my fear of those guys as arachnids. And so just some time spending together, I felt like me and him became good friends. And so it was nice being in his company, 
nice getting to check him out. He did gas me a couple of times, but that kind of comes with the territory of holding a vinegar in. But it was a blast. God bless you, buddy. After the vinegar room, we continued our quest for snakes and it took us to a rock cut that we had been wanting to shine. And so we strapped on her reflective vest and got after it and started shining rock cuts. But sadly, we did not catch anything once again. And that will lead us to the end of night two.